Ah! Ooh. Wastelands! Oh, I guess there's a new set of magic cards that's coming out pretty soon, too. We should probably talk about that. We have some things to talk about. Yeah, we should probably talk Including about those cards. a handful of cards that may be impactful in this format. Watery Grave will be a reprint in Guilds of Ravnica. It's certainly still good here, too, as Noah Walker is going to play Delver Secrets. Down to 18, Noah goes, which is exactly what he wants to do with his deck. We're going to go over to Brian Colville now. He'll sacrifice the Polluted Delta, see what land he wants to get. And if it's going to be a threat on turn one, is there's a beautiful underground sea, or if he's going to do a little bit of can tripping to get his day started. He'll go with an Inquisition of Kozlek. So neither of the two things I mentioned, instead a discard spell targeting Noah Walker. And we're going to see Walker's hand here of a Ponder, a Brainstorm, another Delver of Secrets, a Gurmag Angler, and a Bloodstained Mire for the Legacy veteran at a young age. And a lot of overlap between these two decks, but a couple uh, interesting points of distinction. Uh, since Noah Walker is playing with Death Shadow and trying to deal damage to himself, he's playing with cards like Thoughtseize instead of Inquisition of Kozlek. Also, Koval this weekend playing two main deck copies of Bitter Blossom, so he has a little bit of interest in preserving his life total to leverage Bitter Blossom a little bit better. And so you see Inquisition here in lieu of Thoughtseize. It's going to snag a Brainstorm. Will Koval, we're going to reveal a Hymn to Torak there for Noah Walker as Delver Secrets will transform into Insectile Aberration. So 3-2 Flyer to get things started here for Noah. He'll come across here for three. As I did mention, Noah did make the top eight of Grand Prix Richmond, the legacy portion of that tournament with this deck. I'm sure he's made some changes since then. And we also can't forget that his uh, resume and legacy, especially here on the SD Tour, well, it very much speaks for itself. Yeah, he's been a dominant fixture of our legacy opens now for several years. And uh, very impressive to watch someone relatively young among the sea of competitors navigate a format this old with this many weird interactions as well as he does. He's going to look to resolve a him to Torek, but that'll be dazed by Colville. Colville says that's not going to happen. Now here's a Delver of Secrets for Brian as we'll head back over to Noah. Noah will untap his 3-2 Insectile Aberration. And he'll be starting things off with a Ponder. So take a look at the top three cards, Patrick, as you love to say. Make that draw step just a little bit better. And I, I think something that... Uh, Noah does very well, and if you're looking to get in the format, something you have to learn to do. The sequencing of his cantrips and his fetch lands, he's just got that stuff down. And, and so much of Legacy is squeezing out a little bit of an extra better draw step here and there. Uh, manipulating your cantrips and your shuffle effects is the major route to do that. And Noah navigates that extremely well. Walker taking a look at a Street Wraith, a land, and a Dismember in those top three cards. Of course, don't forget, we got a pretty good idea of what the hand is. Gurmag Angler might be the best card in his hand at the moment. But Walker is trying to figure out exactly how he wants to set things up here on his third turn of the game. Tried to resolve a Hymn That did not happen. The Ponder did resolve. He'll keep that top card. He's going to come across here for three in the air. Colville's going to fall down to 13. And now he'll cycle the Street Wraith. Walker going to fall down a little bit lower. Looks like 13 as well. Now Noah will play a Scalding Tarn. Angler is a possibility right now, so he's going to sacrifice that Scalding Tarn. Going to let some of those cards go. And now for Walker, as he digs a land out of his deck, he's going to go with, it looks like an Underground Sea. And I think the goal here for Walker was to be able to set up Gurmag Angler with the ability to pay for days. And I think he should have enough cards in his graveyard where he can leave up one mana and try to resolve this angler. Yeah, there go all six cards, plus one for the angler. And the follow-up now is another Delver of Secrets. If Brian wants to daze that, I'm sure Noah doesn't seem to mind. Noah does a fantastic job, unsurprisingly, playing around days. And now we're going to head back over to Colville, it looks like. Though it looks like we're going to see a reveal there of Force of Will. So maybe, yeah, Noah actually had a daze to daze back to resolve his Delver. And now we head back over to Colville, who again did reveal Force of Will. We'll get another transformation there as Noah's going to re reveal his own force of will. He's playing quickly because he's ahead, folks, and he is very confident in his position. And you wonder why. You know, why is there so much emphasis on one mana in this format? Koval playing main deck copies of Bitter Blossom. Why isn't that more common? Why aren't cards like Kim Torak, the walker playing a few this weekend, and Terminate, why aren't those cards more popular? And you can see Koval here has not gotten to two mana yet in mm -hmm. this game. Here's a Brainstorm. It's going to have to be a pretty darn good one as Brian Colville is going to draw three cards. He'll put two back, but he might be putting all the cards back in his deck here in just a moment because this is going to be a tough spot to get out of. And Koval has flashed a Lightning Bolt in his hand here, and he's had multiple sto uh, spots here to play it profitably on Insectile Aberration. It makes me think he did not have access to red mana, may have kept a one-land hand with a cantrip, never got off the ground. No, he did not. Is Noah Walker's going to win game number one here over Brian Colville? Demir Death Shadow very quickly up a game there over Grixis Delva. Noah Walker doing Noah Walker things, making it look easy here early this morning in Baltimore. We'll check out Brian Colville's sideboard here. 
two surgical extractions, two diabolic edicts, two marsh casualties, two Liliana the last hope, two power blasts, two abrade. A Liliana's defeat, a flusterstorm, and a snapcaster mage. Brian looking to kind of get his feet a little more set this game. Well, this is going to be uh, th this sort of sideboarding to me is always really interesting because he's got some bigger cards here like Liliana the last hope and snapcaster mage. Uh, that are pretty good against Walker, but the question is, do you ever get to that much mana? Is the game determined that that uh, that early or that late? I do like the Pyroblasts. Plenty of things to counter there, and it's cheap. Whether he wants to do things like Diabolic Edict, Snapcaster Mage, the Lilianas, that to me is an open question. I I've seen them be good in these kind of matchups, and I've also seen them rot in, in his hand, the same way that we saw in game number one with his expensive cards being uncastable. Well, you know, no Wasteland's involved in that game, but Brian just really can never get his feet set. I think the dazes that he played, they were necessary to play, otherwise the game would have been close at all. Oh, of course, yeah, and, and that, that contributes to it, too. You need to be dazing here to kind of defend yourself early on in the game. That sets you back and makes it even harder to get these cards. We'll go to Noah Walker's sideboard. You'll find some similar cards here, as these decks are Demir-based. You've got three Surgical Extractions, two Liliana the Last Hope, and a whole bunch of one-ofs here, so stay with me. A Flusterstorm, another copy of him to Torak. Diabolic Edict, Echoing Truth, Massacre, Dark Blast, Dread of Night, Marsh Cat Casualties, Liliana's Defeat, becoming a very common sideboard card nowadays, and a Ratchet Bomb. And, and this is much the same story. I, I like the one Fluster Storm. I think that's easy to bring in. And then past that, you know, do you want to have Diabolic Edict, Liliana Last Hope, these cards that are a little bit more expensive? I think that's an open question. I would bring in the Diabolic Edict. I, I'm guessing you're supposed to bring in the Liliana's as well, but, uh, you know, I've seen three mana cards be bad in these kind of matchups over and over again. It's very tough to get there with Wastelands and Dazes and so many other counter spells involved making things very difficult. So we'll see how both players elect the sideboard. Both these players a ton of success here on the SCG Tour. We'll get to that in just a moment, but first we're going to start off with our weekly sale, folks, where you, yes you, get to save some more money because that's what we do. Well, you can head over to go.srcgames.com slash weekly sale to find out uh, the weekly sale. Every week we have a new category, so make sure to be checking back to see what's on sale. Uh, right now, up to 20% off select Legacy and Vintage Singles. Mother of Runes, Winds of Heat, Gush. I doubt that's very expensive to begin with, but on sale. <laughs> and Fiery Confluence. Go Among other cards. Yes, of course. Go to StarCityGames.com slash weekly sale. Patrick Sullivan, a practitioner of the weekly sale. I, I am getting it coming and going. <laughs> He also broke the token strategy. Broke the oh. token strategy. I'm sure we'll get to that later yeah. this oh, weekend. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can inform our fantastic viewers. Exactly I cannot about believe I still have this job. Yeah. <laughs> well, Noah Walker, a player we're going to learn a little bit more about here for just a moment as the success for Noah Walker is plentiful for the 22-year-old from Amherst, Massachusetts with 11 open top eights, three wins, two in Legacy, a team open win as well in which he was in the Legacy seat. Invitational top eight still does elude him, but eh, I think it's going to get here sooner or later. Too good at magic to not have one of those as the member of Team Card Order. At one point in his life, had more PTQ top eights than years alive, and, well, if peeing your pants isn't cool, then I don't want to be cool. That's right. Peeing your pants is definitely cool. There is Noah Walker, member of Team Card Hoarder. When he's not peeing his pants, he's, uh, he, he's crushing people with Delver strategies. He has been uh, just a dominant fixture of the legacy tournaments we've been holding. His success is now translated to the Grand Prix circuit as well. And it's always this deck or some variation of this deck. Yeah, you know, I, I was talking to Noah at Grand Prix Richmond briefly. I was wondering if he was going to go back to Grace's Delver or play uh, Demir Death Shadow, given what Josh Utterlayton did at Pro Tour. Uh, excuse me, Magic 25th anniversary, and Noah's just like, I I'm pretty sure this is just the best deck now. You know, he thought it was better than Grixis Delver, especially when he lost Deathrite Shaman, and that appears to be the case. I think Wasteland days and the best stuff you can do for 0 and 1 is typically the best thing to be doing in Legacy, particularly if you can navigate the games well. And it's no surprise to me that Walker's had the level of success that he's had over this sustained period. There'll be a Volcanic Island and a Preordain here for Brian Colville. Brian Colville trying to just get his feet set this game. Wasn't able to do that. Was defending himself accordingly with Dazes, but when you do that, that means you're behind on lands, can't cast enough spells, and Colville had some difficulty in game number one. However, he is on the initiative this game, being on the play as we head back over to Noah Walker. Walker's going to sacrifice a polluted delta. 19, of course, but it's going to just be 19 because he's not going to search up a watery grave. And Koval there drew a Snapcaster Mage off of the Preordain, suggesting that he, well, he's brought in the Snapcaster Mage, obviously, and may have sideboarded into uh, slightly more expensive cards here. I think that strategy is better on the play than on the draw. It'll be a Delver of Secrets. Now there'll be a Lightning Bolt with a mana available. Do you have to pay for days? So Koval going to play that land first to make sure the counter spell doesn't trip him up. So the Delver of Secrets is taken care of. We head back over to Noah Walker for his second turn of the game. 
and we'll see what he wants to do here. It'll be a Wasteland, and it'll be another Delver of Secrets. See if no one wants to fire off this Wasteland or not, but we're going to see, of course, first if this Delver of Secrets is even going to resolve, because Koval is flipping between a couple of cards, and among them is a Force of Will. Wasteland's going to go after Underground C. Underground C is going to go into the graveyard, so no stifles to worry about a card that actually has kind of worked itself, Patrick, out of Legacy. I think leaving up a mana in this format's really hard. That's what it comes down to. And this uh, Shadow deck can function so easily off of just the one mana. Some builds we've seen in the past of, of Delver decks have, maybe they have Stoneforge Mystic, maybe they have Tarmogoyf, they need to get to two mana. This Demir Shadow deck can run just off of one with Delver of Secrets, Death Shadow, and Gurmag Angler. So trying to keep them off mana by Stifle, um, less effective here than it's been against Delver decks in the past. It'll be a Bloodstained Mire into a Watery Grave there for Walker, so he's going to fall down to 16. We'll see what comes next. Obviously, we're not in Death Shadow range just yet, but he's going to go with the Hymn to Torak, the very powerful discard spell that's starting to make its way back in a legacy. It'll be a forcible removing force of will, so you can say he got his two cards. He still got his money. Mm -hmm. As it looks like we're going to head back over Brian's way now. He's got a land to play here in just a moment as the former Invitational Champion. Two Volcanic Islands in Underground Sea. This is a Snapcaster Mage. And it's going to be an attempt at a lightning bolt to take care of the Delver of Secrets, and that will resolve. No days to worry about. So, another threat handled there for Koval. He's got his feet set here this game. He's got what most people can't do in Legacy, Patrick. Three lands. Yeah, and now if he's brought in some more expensive cards, uh, those cards are, are comfortably online now. Well, another threat to have to worry about here in Gurmag Angler. The real big fish is on the stack, and it's going to resolve. So now we head back over to Koval. And this card is a bit of a vulnerability for Koval's build. His removal spells are Fatal Push and Lightning Bolt. Not the best against Gurmag Angler. Well, Liliana's defeat doesn't look so bad. We'll take a look at that card here in just a moment, as that's going to take care of the Angler. Now here's a Ponder afterwards. So while Brian works on that, we'll take a look at Liliana's defeat. Becoming a legacy staple here in the sideboards. All these Demir-based decks, a lot of players going towards Gurmag Anglers and Death Shadows as Ponder resolves. Koval's going to keep it on top. The one-mana Black Sorcery says destroy target Black Creature or Black Plane. Walker, if that permanent was a Liliana, which actually could happen in Legacy, her controller loses three life as now here's a third Delver of Secrets for Brian to have to deal with. And Koval needs to have a little bit of removal for Gurmag Angler because game one, most of his answers are kind of sideways answers. True Name Nemesis, Bitter Blossom, he's got some routes to block it. Maybe he can block and bolt to finish it off, but his spells don't line up the right way. Uh, good for him to have some cards in his sideboard to handle Gurmag Angler specifically. True Name Nemesis is going to resolve here, of course, going to choose Noah Walker as it looks like Delver is going to trade with a Snapcaster Mage. There's a Merfolk Rogue as it enters the battlefield. You choose a player, Tree Nemesis has protection from the chosen player. Here is a Thought Seize. Looks like Brian's going to sacrifice this Scalding Tarn in response. But you can kind of see the difference in these two players' decks. For Noah Walker, everything's one or two mana. Mm -hmm. You know, Noah Walker's got it. The Gurmag Linger, which sure, it costs seven mana in quotes. This here's a brainstorm response to that thought sees. But in reality, it's always a one mana 5-5 five, five for him. True Nemesis a little bit better than that, as Daze is going to take care of the brainstorm. But it costs three, and three mana is a lot, as now here's Diabolic Edict to take care of that three mana threat as we head back over to Brian. Great sequencing there from Noah. <laughs> Unsurprisingly. <laughs> Unsurprising. Yeah. Looks like Brian might be thinking about doing perhaps a little dredging. He does have Gurmag Anglers of his own. We can't forget he does have Snapcaster Mage, too. He might be thinking two mana here for the Angler to leave himself some cards in the graveyard to work with because of Snapcaster and Future Angler. So there is a real big fish there for Brian Colvel. We go over to Noah Walker. He wants to do a little cantrip, and he'll do a preordain. Scry two. Both to the bottom, draw one. New card coming there for Noah. He'll cycle a Street Wraith. Now another new card coming at the cost of two life. And it's a subtle thing about Koval's list, but something I do like a lot He's playing a 7th dual land. A lot of these decks try to skate by on just, you know, 3 Cs, 3 Volcanics, or whatever your color blend is. He has a 4th Underground C, which is, doesn't again, does not seem like much, but it's an acknowledgement that his deck is trying to play with some more expensive cards in these kind of matchups post-board, and he's in the market just to make his land drops. He's happier to draw his dual lands uh, than these decks typically are. This will be a ponder here for Brian. He'll take a look at the top 3 cards once again here. He's going to keep with his ponder. Follow up with a Bitter Blossom. Now, this is a very, very good threat against Demir Death Shadow. 
Blocks basically everything, Patrick. There's no trample in the in the shadow deck, so you don't have to worry about that. It's infinite chump blockers plus on a board like this, infinite attackers. The concern is it's slow. It takes a little while to get going. And it's, you know, again, it's funny to say this, but it's two mana. And <laughs> yeah. it's, you know, you don't get to two mana all the time, particularly when you're on the draw. In this spot here, with Koval having a lot of life to play with, Walker being incapable of removing this card from the battlefield, I, I think we're going to be going to game three here in just a moment. It's interesting, at the early stages of this decade, this was a defining enchantment, maybe the best thing going on in standard during Lorwyn block. It's a little bit different now. Things have certainly changed, but in certain situations and in certain matchups, Bitter Blossom is exactly what you're looking for. And it may not have won Brian that game, but it certainly prevented him from losing the game, as Brian's going to win game number two here over Noah Walker. Grixis Delver, Demir Shadow, going to get ready for a third and final one. And, and and to the point about Koval playing with more dual lands, uh, Walker here on six. So he's keeping it, you know, that that's kind of historically how these decks have shaped up. He's trying to keep it as lean as possible. He's in the market to cantrip and shuffle and put cards as graveyard as much as possible. And Koval is willing to deaccelerate on that a little bit to be able to make sure he can hit his land drops. Well, you see the sideboards here once again. Both players are going to go back to the drawing board briefly here. I'm sure some things change a little bit on the play and the draw. But, of course, you know, you do see the options here. We saw Liliana's defeat there from Brian in that game. Very, very important. Maybe the additional Snapcaster Mage has come in. Noah Walker, we saw his Diabolic Eater take care of that Shuri Nemesis. Otherwise, things may have been a little bit more difficult. And perhaps another Hymn to Torek has come in for Noah. But these players do quickly go to the drawing board. Always a good thing to do, not only after game number one, but also game number two. No question. And especially in Legacy, I think that's the format where play versus draw is going to inform your sideboarding decisions quite a bit more than most formats. From from Cobalt's perspective, I think these two and three mana cards get a little bit sketchier when he's on the draw. He still may want them. Bitter, Bitter Blossom, I think, is still worth having. Um, and I think Diabolic Edict and those kind of cards are still worth having. But, it, you know, they get a lot worse when you're on the draw and hitting your land drops and playing around days is a lot more challenging. Brian, a former Invitational Champion, as I've mentioned a couple times during this match, and our current Invitational Champion, of course, is Aaron Barich. He wanted to be a Soldier Token. He got that from the Invitational. He also walked away with a whole bunch of money, a trophy, and some real bragging rights, of course. And for Aaron, this token, we, of course, give away to you wonderful people at home with your orders and in some entries. Yeah, the easiest way, just come out to an open, a classic. You get this token when you sign up if you can. And the order from StarCityGames.com, $5, exactly $5 yeah, so or here more. We go, here we go. We give you one of these tokens. Not like you've placed multiple $5 orders to get a token. You would never do that. Yeah, I'm Barrage flooded. Yeah. <laughs> that is here. I have more of those tokens than I know what to do with. A for, uh, our current Invitational Champion, our former Invitational, Brian Koval, will take a moment to learn a little bit more about 30-year-old from Pittsburgh, PA. I'm sure he's a Steelers fan. He's got that one invitation on top eight and the one win. Looking for more top eights on the resume. But, you know, the conversion rate, 100%. Yeah. So you want to do it. Super easy. Don't waste it. Play trombone in many unsuccessful ska bands. Board certified behavior analyst. And, oh, I did not know this. Maybe a hidden ringer for you to battle against. Always in for pickup basketball. I have not I have not touched a basketball in over a year, but I would still I would still go at it. I'm trying to think. Brian, kind of tall. Strength he's also maybe 30. <laughs> Okay. That's a big, those six years are a big six years. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Here's a thought seize to kick things off. We're going to see a Misty Rainforest, a Polluted Delta, a Wasteland, along with an Underground Sea. Those are the lands to go along with the Diabolic Edict. Looks like maybe a copy of Liliana's Defeat and then a Trudy Nemesis. So a slower hand with no cantrips, but plenty of lands and the ability here to fire off a Wasteland. And, you know, you always wonder when you're playing against a deck like Noah's, they keep a lot of one-landers. Yes, they do. With cantrips. Oh, the incentive just to go for it here is is pretty high. Especially on the draw. Yep. And normally, if you have a Delver of Secrets, you just lead with that card. Yeah. So it looks like Liliana's defeat is going to go to the graveyard. We're going to go back over to Brian. Brian going to draw a card. Are you going to fire off that wasteland? Mm. Yes, he is. Get him. Get him. Walker got a second land. We're going to find out here in just a moment. Looks, looks like, like he does. Yeah, he's got a Delta. Yep. Walker going to sacrifice that, fall down to 15, get himself an underground seat. So I know you have a true nemesis in your hand. It's a little, and you're on the draw. Typically, those are not the best spots to waste land someone. Yep. But there's a chance that Walker's hand just doesn't function yep. if, you, if you get him there. And that percentage of the time, whatever that is, 20% of the time, whatever, 
that's probably higher upside than trying to play your true name nemesis as early as possible. Especially because you have to imagine that Noah's got answers to true nemesis after sideboard anyway. Yeah. We already saw that with Diabolic Edict. We know he's got March Castleys in the sideboard. Brian, a pretty seasoned legacy player. He knows that a true nemesis sticking isn't game over. And, you know, especially because Walker could have simply thought seized away the true name nemesis were he that vulnerable to it. Pluted Delta there for Brian. Pass the turn back over to Noah. Does Noah have land? Number two, I guess number three technically since his first one got blown up. The answer is yes. Delta, here's a ponder. That'll resolve. Walker will take a look at the top three cards once again, looking to increase the quality of that draw step just a touch. And you see he resolves his ponders and his brainstorms and his preordains relatively quickly. Again, he is a veteran of these style of decks here in Legacy. So much success for Noah Walker in the Legacy format. Brian going to play a Misty Rainforest. Just going to pass the turn back once again. So he's not up to a ton here. Again, we know about the true name nemesis that is in hand. Don't know what he's picked up over the past couple of turns, but we'll find out soon enough, I'm sure, as Noah Walker will draw a card and begin his fourth turn of the game. And if possible, Koval would like to sit on these fetch lands for as long as possible. Uh, they are not vulnerable to wasteland. His dual lands are, and he's trying to get to a three-mana spell. It's a ponder. Take a look at the top couple of cards here. It's like Fatal Push among them. Among them pardon me. Third ponder of the game here for Noah. But it appears as though he's a little threat light. We saw in the first couple of games there, Delver of Secrets were early and often. This time, not so much. Just have a Street Wraith in hand. Perhaps this is a Death Shadow game more than a Delver of Secrets game, as Noah's going to keep up the ponder once again. Place that into the graveyard now that it's done resolving. He'll cycle a Street Wraith. Looks like he's interested in that next card, too. As he falls down to 13. See what comes next for our Demir Death Shadow player. And Walker here might be willing to play into days. There was not one in Koval's opening hand. Koval's just taking two blind draw steps here. If Walker is thinking about Gurmag Angler, he might be willing to risk it. <laughs> It'll be a water grave. Walker down to 10. Death Shadow very much online now. Is that what he's going to play? This is a Delver of Secrets in Wasteland Pass. An interesting sequencing there from Walker, suggesting that he would have been okay with the Delver getting dazed. There's a bolt. That means Volcanic Island is the land that Delta is going to find. And there's the red removal spell on the very powerful 1-1 one, one that, of course, transforms into a 3-2 flyer. Delver down. Wasteland still around, at least for right now. Curious to see if Walker wants to fire this off. He will. There goes the Volcanic, and we're going to head back over to Brian. Brian will draw. Remember, we know he's land heavy, or at least he was not the early stages of this game. Fired off a Wasteland already. We knew he had multiple lands past that. You can see the Underground Sea in Brian's hand. Now he's going to sacrifice the Misty Rainforest. That will be an underground sea. Now another underground sea, and now of the real big fish playing around a day is very well there by Brian Colville. Now we're going to head back over to Noah. He's got to contend with a 5 5 when he's at 10. This is a hymn to Torok. <laughs> Looks like that's going to resolve. So we'll roll some dice to randomize here, or at least try to. There goes one of those. And now one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm sure. There we are. Two cards will go away. It's a, it looks like a Bitter Blossom and a Diabolic Eating. It doesn't seem like bad hits, truth be told. Well, Walker's still now aware that uh, Trinity Nemesis is still in Koval's hands. Mm -hmm. In for five. Walker's going to fall down to five. One more lethal shot as this is going to be an attempted Trinity Nemesis. See if Walker has something like a daze here or not. He does. So the Trinity Nemesis will be answered again. This is kind of the problem with three mana threats. Something you've talked about so much as there's Diabolic Edict. An attempt at it to take care of the angler that would kill him. That will work. Yeah, it's and, and play versus draw. Again, it's a big difference about how good those two and three mana cards are. Inquisition of Kozak is going to give us an idea of what Walker is working with. 
You'll see a brainstorm, a daze, and a marsh casualties for Noah. Brainstorm will bite the dust. Brian knows what he's got to worry about now in days and marsh casualties, and he'll simply pass the turn back. So we'll go back over to Noah. Noah will draw a card. A preordain's not a bad start. He'll take a look at the top two cards. They go to the bottom real quick. He's not interested in either one of those. The follow-up is a Delver of Secrets. That is going to resolve. As we head back over to Brian. Brian will draw. Your former Invitational Champion is going to start off with a preordain for his turn, Scry 2, just like Noah Walker did last turn. Looks like Snapcaster Mage is one of the cards that he's looking at. There's some appeal there with maybe the discard spell or the Diabolic Edict, though that's asking a lot, and he's already got an answer anyway in Fatal Push, so that'll take care of that. And Walker really on the hunt now for Gurmag Angler, as that is a card that Cobalt does not handle well. Wasteland will take care of the Red Source, pass the turn back. And you can see play versus draw, how different Snapcaster Mage, Bitter Blossom, True Name Nemesis, cards that were really good for Cobalt in game number two, are so much worse in this third game. Yeah. Though this game is going longer, which is, is good for Brian. It is going longer, but, you know, the, the days is on, on Walker's side when he's got a little bit more leverage to work with. Those get better. Uh, Koval now at, at some has to be aware of the risk of getting cut off of red mana for the remainder of the game. He's got one Volcanic left in the deck. If that happens to get Wastelanded, could be trouble. There is the Volcanic. All right, Thought sees you. See what this is. Snappy? Okay. Walker's going to fall down to three for doing that. I suppose he could daze his own Thoughtseize. Koval well, is out of cards. He could just daze the Snapcaster Mage. Oh, that's true. My fault. You're right. You're right. It is really fancy to be dazing the the uh, the Thoughtseize. Sure, right. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Sure. No, you are, you are correct. Replay the land. Pass the turn back. Brainstorm on the top. Ryan knew it. Bolt you, and that'll take care of it. Brian Cole is going to win this match over Noah Walker. Two games to one. It's rare that we see Noah lose in Legacy, but his day is off to an 0-1 start as former.